Dear organizers, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, allow me to thank the organizers of, uh, for the invitation to take part in this interesting conference. Now, I can say that my report falls in uh, the first part of uh, what Mr. Bujilov said. I'll make a short overview of what has happened so far, and I will focus on processes in 2012 and 2013 in Afghanistan, particularly uh, with regard to the, tr the attempts of women to take part in uh, decision-making at local and national levels. Also, I'll go over the issues that uh, Afghani police women face uh, within the Afghani police force, and I will mention some uh, stories mentioned by Afghani women working in uh, uh, organizations for the promotion of uh, rights of women in Afghanistan. Uh, education there is extremely important, and there are tendencies that we as foreigners have a hard time noticing. However, the locals who are directly affected by those processes have an important viewpoint, and I will mention it. So, human rights situation in Afghanistan in various areas, including rights of women and children, freedom of religion, uh, requires continuous effort to overcome the problems in these areas. Even though the Taliban are no longer in power, and this has been the case for 12 years, in many parts of the country the population continues to be terrorized by Taliban-related groups. Unfortunately, uh, there is very high insecurity and this decreases access to food, health care and education. Even though uh, health, uh, the access to education has been improved and girls can already uh, go to school, many children cannot attend classes. After the end of the Taliban rule in, twen in 2001, the agreement with Bonn creates the Afghani Independent Committee for Human Rights. It is a national institution for the promotion and protection of human rights and for the pursuit of infringement against human rights as well as military crime. In the Constitution of Afghanistan from 2004, uh, the uh, existence of this committee is provided for. Even though we still have uh, violence and transformation, and this renders it difficult to understand what really happens in place, uh, various NGOs accuse branches of the Afghani government for uh, violence of, uh, their right of human rights. Various Afghani fractions are responsible for various uh, infringements of human rights, including um, including uh, rapes and uh, blackmail and robberies. I would like to mention the conference in Kabul in July 2010 when the government of Afghanistan committed to drafting national priority programs. Those priority programs, especially the one in the field of human rights and civil responsibilities, are headed by the Afghani Independent Commission for Human Rights. It, is com it complements the effort of the government in the fields of human rights, legal and civil um, literacy aimed at various Afghani provinces. This means that we would like to cover all the population, not just Kabul. Women play a, an important role in the conference in Kabul. Uh, they have drafted plans for the development of capacity, for the speeding up of the implementation of the national plan for uh, action for women in Afghanistan. Those national programs aimed at creating crea uh, conditions for the development of uh, for sustainable development and decreasing poverty, human rights and gender equality are uh, affected in various areas of policy. We aim for a better social security as well. The European Union also has a very important role in that process. It encourages the participation of women in all uh, political processes, including parliamentary elections. The EU provides political and financial support for the implementation of Resolution 1325 and 1820 for women, peace, and security. And it includes uh, the um, participation of women representatives of the consultative meeting for peace, the JIRGA meeting in June 2010. A very typical thing for Afghanistan is that it has very high need for uh, the participation in the administrative capacity of women. 
For a very long time, girls could not go to school and tr uh, women traditionally did not work. That is why there are very few women in public administration and various NGOs put in a lot of effort to increase their number. This is related to improving uh, gender equality and also decreasing the cases uh, for infringement of uh, women's rights. And now I would like to elaborate on the participation of women in the political life. They amount to 55% of the population, which is about 25 million day, uh, people according to the last census. Uh, their participation after the fall of the Taliban regime has increased. As of September 2013, there are 68 uh, MPs in the lower chamber of parliament, 28 women are senators in the upper chamber, three women are ministers, including Minister of Social Affairs, uh, Healthcare, and women on uh, in the Ministry of Women's Affairs. And related to this, uh, there was a joke in an Australian newspaper that uh, Afghanistan is more democratic than Australia because as of this September this year, there is only one woman minister in Australia. Uh, there is one woman governor of the Bamiyan uh, province. This is the first uh, situation. And also there is a head of the Commission for Human Rights with the women and uh, the uh, Red Crescent is also a w uh, head is also a woman. And there are nine women participating in the uh, Supreme Council for Peace. The rising number of women who actively participate in policy means that we can expect positive changes in the long term in the field of human rights and gender equality. The uh, situation in Afghanistan gives a lot of opportunities, but also it puts obstacles to the participation of women in the political life. There are various examples for the increase of uh, influence of women in uh, the public sphere, but we need to continue on the pr current effort. We should not underestimate the fact that women in parliament and in provincial councils are elected on the quota basis. This creates the feeling that only women voted for these women or that they, are represented in, they are represent only women. This means that those women do not represent the Afghani society as a whole. On the other hand, according to uh, research carried out in India and Zambia, shows that the quota principle in the long term has very positive effect on attitudes in a society in which women otherwise would have very limited access to the political field and the decision-making process. 2013 has marked specific turning points regarding the participation of women in the political life of Afghanistan. In May this year, the lower chamber of parliament has amended the electoral law according to which a quarter of all seats in provincial council are saved for women. Human rights organization and women's organization learned about this uh, a month later and this means that this law was passed without the presence of the 68 MPs in the lower chamber of parliament. After serious pressure and serious uh, negotiation, the clause was re-established, but the number of women in parliament was decreased uh, by uh, from 25% as a quota to 20%. According to some researchers, this measure can have negative impact on the activity of women in the coming elections, both on, uh, as candidates and uh, as voters. According to data for the president elections in 2014 and also elections for uh, regional councillors show political development in uh, Afghanistan and related to the rights of women. The number of women who have applied for candidates of provincial councillors has increased. Uh, 273 of them are women. Besides, Almost 2 million voters have registered, 30.5% uh, of them are women. This is an important progress with, uh, in comparison with the previous pre presidential elections. Last time, many women could not vote because they could not register, and also there were no women um, serving in the sections also. Uh, women are very important in the conciliation processes and peacekeeping processes in Afghanistan. This was highlighted on a conference on the role of women in peacekeeping in Jalalabad in the 22nd of September. 
Uh, this also marked uh, the Day of Peace, the 21st of September. Even though the conference focused mainly on the contribution of women to peacekeeping, it also gave good uh, possibility for interaction between institutions on a provincial and state level. Now I would like to uh, focus on the problems of women in the Afghani National Police. Overcoming gender discrimination and protection of human rights are a new component of the formation of structures of the Afghani National Structure. Uh, an office of the police ombudsman was created as well as a human rights department. Also, the recruitment of women in the National Police is, uh, ha is promoted. Since 2005, the number of women police officers has increased, has increased from 180 to uh, 1,500. Most of them are recruited in cities, but unfortunately in um, entire provinces there is a decrease of the number of women police officers, so, uh, which is due to attacks on them. Another problem is that women usually uh, have the h lowest positions in hierarchy and they are often assaulted by their own colleagues. Often they are not allowed to carry on their police duties. The attitudes of, of society towards uh, women police officers is changing. And in order to tackle with these problems, UPOL and the Ministry of uh, the Interior of Afghanistan have organized large-scale conferences in order to solve this issue on the government level. In addition, UPOL has organized various activities in order to fight against dis discrimination against women in the National Police. Uh, these span from meetings with women organization to raising awareness on these issues. And speaking of uh, governance and education, I would like to mention what I have learned from different uh, representatives of organizations for women in Afghanistan. They claim that the, the main issue is not just education of uh, children and young girls, but the education of family as well. The problem is that the families would not like to tolerate the access of girls to education. Several girls or uh, women's organizations have uh, taken different initiatives, and I think that they are very useful, uh, in order to educate parents when they go to service in the mosque. Uh, the parents should be encouraged to let their children go to school, their young girls go to school. Also, various organizers have set up shelters for women and young girls who have been victims of domestic violence. Uh, there are 40 such centers in Kabul. Unfortunately, in Mazaraf Sharif, there is no not a such center, no such center, because uh, there was resistance to the attempts to uh, set up such a center in Mazar Sharif and Herat. In those centers, uh, the girls receive elementary education and also some uh, main labor habits because most of them they have, have never worked in their lives so they learn weaving sewing uh, so that they can contribute to the afghan economy on the other hand uh, according to the women's organization women's organizations another issue is that when girls graduate university they have a really hard time finding a job especially in the field of economy because uh, the Afghani government's uh, government and the Afghani com uh, industrial association do not promote the participation of women in the economy and the SMEs. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.